Hello, my name is Oliver Botar, and I'm a professor of art history at the School of Art of the University of Manitoba. I'd like to speak to you today about the art of Lionel Lemoyne Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald is best known as the only member of the Group of Seven to hail from Western Canada, um, and he is most famous for his scenes of his own neighborhood in the western suburb of Winnipeg, known as St. James, where he painted his own house, the house of his neighbor, Dr. Snyder, the garages, the back alleys, the banks of the Assiniboine River with its poplar trees and the elm trees of his neighborhood as well. What he managed to do was to make the ordinary extraordinary through a kind of careful looking, patient and careful drawing and painting that was almost phenomenological in its intensity. I'd like to speak to a different aspect of his oeuvre today. I'd like to speak about Fitzgerald and the erotic. This may come as a surprise to you. Most of us think of Fitzgerald as a kind of straight-laced, shy man, which he was. Most people don't know that he had a torrid extramarital love affair in the 1940s with a young artist, a former student of his actually, named Irene Haywood. As a result of this affair, Fitzgerald kind of went through a transformation. He became much more aware of his own sexuality than he had been before. He made a series of drawings that were remarkably explicit in their eroticism. These drawings can be associated with a series of letters that he wrote secretly to Haywood after she left Manitoba and moved to Toronto, and in which he describes his experiences with her and his desire for her. The eroticism of his work extends beyond these drawings, and he sent her a number of them as well, always using a secret monogram, just to make sure that if they fell into the wrong hands that people wouldn't necessarily know who the letters and were from and the drawings were by. This eroticism extends to uh, drawings he made of the shoreline rocks and trees on Bowen Island in British Columbia, one of the Gulf Islands where his daughter lived during the 1940s and the 1950s. He also wrote letters to Haywood. And these letters are remarkably frank in their poetic eroticism. There's almost nothing else like them that I know of anyway in Canadian literature of the time and there is nothing like these drawings either, as far as I know, in Canadian art of the time. Fitzgerald continues to surprise us.